it, um, it's a story of us all growing together. The piece grew together. And um, I loved that design with the tree and the sort of somewhere between a barn and an amphitheater inside a New York City brick warehouse. Um, that's that first production was 100 percent magical it was just a magical space and you know rachel had known she wanted a, a really mythic tree um under which that story could be told and we made that tree reach out over the audience and kind of embrace the whole space which was really wonderful um the audience we we reconstructed the theater into into this wooden oval amphitheater kind of defined by the walls of the space um, put a bar, tucked a bar in under the riser so you can grab a beer on the way in. And um, we put the music central. The music has always been central to this piece. It started as a as a concert. It started as a, you know, Aeneas all, ro always wrote it as a musical theater piece, but it was the studio album um, was the heart of it. And, you know, Aeneas is a, a pure poet and a beautiful person. Um, and didn't know the rules of music theater, which is what makes it such a great piece. It's just not following a formula of any kind. Um, and so that that production was very much concert first. Um, lots of mics with cables on stage, very small space. The uh, actors worked up and through the audience. Um, and ultimately it turned out that the, you know, the, um, the root and down was through the straight through the audience and you just never realized it was there until they used it to try and make the final ascent um which was extraordinarily intimate and quite beautiful um and that production ran absolutely as long as it could in that theater and uh we had hopes of it moving forward because it had been so well received and so beloved and so we went, our producers made a quite brilliant choice to take us to a really protected space to try and figure out how to do the show in proscenium. And we questioned everything. We questioned all of the impulses. We were like, okay, now we have things like traps and wings and flies. We have a little more resources. We have more space. We have more crew. We have more everything. Um, we had the workers chorus for the first time. And so we all went back in and and learned an awful lot, honestly, about what the what the show was not. And that information was as valuable as the things that were. It's where we figured out the gesture of the scope of the reveal into the into the second shift. And it's where we learned that the poetry of the lyrics could not. The show wouldn't hold a little literal translation of those. So that Canadian production, which was you know just too far away in north Ca northern canada and edmonton in the dead of winter it was very successfully protected where we learned all these things um and then we had the great benefit of taking all that information and going back to the piece and together everybody was growing together Aeneas was writing david was david and rachel were developing the movement vocabulary there were suddenly many more voices lyrically and we were like, okay, well, that didn't work. What do we do now? We literally threw out half the scenery after the dress rehearsal. Quite literally, it was on the dock. And, and that was the first time Rachel knew she wanted the performers to be present for the whole show. She put that, you know, we got some stuff from the basement. They remade Persephone's dress. We put the tables and chairs under the tree. Um, and and our, everybody was present. And, and that, you know, from the very beginning. Um, when we went to develop the show for what one was when you uh, so broadway's weird um and you don't really it happens very fast and you have to know what you're doing the minute you hear you have a theater so you can't be like oh okay great we're gonna go to the golden and we're gonna is that you have to know what the design is and then it happens very fast you have to make it fit in the space you have so we started re we all took a long break after um canada and then we started working in January, developing a design for the proscenium based on everything we had learned. Um, and we worked on it for two or three months, slowly, um, you know, with no no sense of when it would be needed. And out of nowhere, Rachel got a call um, and there was an opportunity at the National Theater. And so they said, um, you know, would you mind um, going to London next week to see if you think the design we're working on would work in this theater? And I said, 
not at all. Yes, I'm available. Happy to go. Went to London and walked in and looked at the Olivier Theatre, which was overwhelming because I hadn't seen it since I was 24. I couldn't believe uh, that we might get the chance to work there. And then I walked in and I looked at the theater and I couldn't believe it. And I pulled up on my phone the picture of the most recent model and it looked like it had been designed for this. Nobody could believe it. It looked like it had been designed for this space. Um, so when we got that chance, um, somehow between the Canadian production and the London production, everybody had seen, Aeneas had seen a new, had seen a new opportunity in the sort of distance of that storytelling we had all decided to lean in together to the new orleans aspect of it i mean if you pull apart those lyrics they're extraordinary they reference many 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 cultures uh many um myths met any all, all kinds of references to death and the other world and life and so it was like to to sort of choose one of those to lean into somewhat um and we had the incredible opportunity in London of six weeks of rehearsal. We were all out of town together. We had a full rehearsal set, including the turntables. Um, and so we were 100% devoted and focused on together finding this story. Um, and that opportunity was, that was it. And we knew what it was then. We knew um, there were elements because impossibly they, they function in rep at the National. So they would do eight performances of our show and then eight performances of Nancy and Cleopatra and then they would put you know so there were there was only so much they could do um but it they didn't considering that they did an enormous amount but when we got to Broadway we then tightened it all back up got our final elements understood about the emotional power of that reveal you know there, there's so many layers to that storytelling but it's like you know there's a lot of blood on the floor on that set but there's also there's so much love and it's the fact that the whole team worked together for se i mean four years five years developing everything developed across the, across the board um so that's how that happened <laughs>